Good morning, everybody. It's nine o'clock. Nine o'clock is with me, Father Warner. We are in the Thursday of the thirty-third week in ordinary time, and our text today is taken from one Maccabees chapter two, verse fifteen to twenty-nine. I've entitled today's teaching, "Can you enforce uniformity in a pluralistic diversity?" So let's read this text together. One Maccabees chapter two, verse fifteen to twenty-nine. The king's officers. Who were enforcing the apostasy came to the town of Modian to make them offer sacrifice. Many from Israel came to them, and Mattathias and his sons were assembled. Then the king's officers spoke to Mattathias as follows: "You are a leader, honored and great in this town, and supported by sons and brothers. Now be the first to come and do what the king commands." as all the gentiles and the people of juda and those that are left in jerusalem have done then you and your sons will be numbered among the friends of the king and you and your sons will be honored with silver and gold and many gifts but mattathias answered and said in a loud voice even if all the nations that live under the rule of the king obey him and have chosen to obey his commandments every one of them abandoning their religion of their ancestors i and my sons and my brothers will continue to live by the covenant of our ancestors far be it from us to desert the law and the ordinances we will not obey the king's word by turning aside from our religion to the right hand or to the left when he had finished speaking these words a jew came forward in the sight of all to offer sacrifice on the altar of modian according to the king's command when mattathai saw this he burned with zeal and his heart was stirred he gave vent to righteous anger he ran and killed him on the altar at the same time he killed the king's officer who was forcing them to sacrifice and he tore down the altar thus he burned with zeal for the law just as phinenius did against zimrison of salu Then Mattathias cried out in the town with a loud voice saying let everyone who is zealous for the law and supports the covenant come out with me then he and his sons fled to the hills and left all that they had in the town at that time many who were seeking righteousness and justice went down to the wilderness to live there the word of the lord thanks be to god in order to deal with threats to his vast empire from both within and anti, um, and also from without but primarily from within antiochus the 4th epiphanes who i have spoken to you and given you a historical background the last two days decided to unite his subjects under a uniform civil code and culture which was called hellenism i did this with you i've already explained what hellenism is it was the hope of antiochus the 4th epiphanes that the imposition of the greek culture and language would eventually unify his kingdom and thus making it easier for him to administer and even govern now king antiochus like many cruel tyrants of today did so first by inducement so offer something to people and hope to god that they will fall by what you say and then finally when inducement doesn't work uh, as all tyrants do they begin to use uh, brute force in our days in our times in our world governments use um, investigative agencies to go after you and to make your life miserable and i think we've seen that all across the world now a uniform civil code in a pluralistic multi ethnic religious and linguistic society is bound to fail if that code is made by a single man with a single agenda or even worse by a parliament where many have criminal records themselves an attempt if any to write such a civil code should rest with the best minds of the nation representing religion culture language gender etc or else it will be a pseudo democratic process with autocratic intentions of staying in power forever uh, now welcome to as i say the world and to the likes of people like uh, the russian president vladimir putin and there is no shortage of such kind of men all across the world now while many of the jews in the maccabean period succumbed to the wild threats of this 
cruel tyrant king Antiochus IV Epiphanes, uh, the scriptures of today tell us of the bravery of the family of Mathathias. In all probability, Mathathias had moved from Jerusalem to the city of Modane to avoid the sacrifice that was mandated by King Antiochus. This uh, was a monthly sacrifice which coincided with the celebrations of the king's birthday. So the king had a, had a, a monthly birthday celebration at which all the people had to offer a sacrifice in order of the king. Now remember, uh, Antiochus IV has taken on the title of Epiphanes, as I explained. Epiphany means the manifestation. So what he is trying to say is that he himself is divine. And he was not the only one. Uh, you will see this even in uh, the Roman Empire, the, the Caesars. It was a cult of, to the godhead Caesar. So uh, many of them believed that uh, uh, they were manifestations of God or God themselves, divinity themselves. Now having left Jerusalem to avoid such an uh, abomination, it was not likely that Mathathias would bow down to the wishes of the king in what might have been uh, perhaps Modian might have been his hometown, that's why he may have left Jerusalem to avoid uh, the squirmish there and getting into an argument or uh, sacrificing or whatever else. But the scriptures tell us that Mathathias was clearly offered inducements to be part of, uh, as we had very cleverly told, of the king's friends. This was the lowest of the four ranks in the order of friends of the king. So the king uh, would have friends, he would have honored friends, he would have first friends and he would have preferred friends. So Mathathias, who could not be bought with gold or silver, was neither going to be purchased by some uh, silly honorific human title of being a friend of the king or of any other position. You know, it's very interesting, uh, when you read the life of St. John Marie Vianney, when St. John Marie Vianney was honored by the government, the French government with titles, he too rejected them. He called them, and I love that line, he called them toys that would deprive him of a place of heaven. Trifles, if I'm not mistaken, and if I remember. He said, what am I going to do with these trifles? And really, if I'm honored here on earth, uh, will I find honor in heaven? And I think, uh, I think honor rhymes, rhymes with honor. But I think the same thing could be said of all of us, including me. Yeah. I know it is, and I understand that it is a human tendency, um, you know, to want a particular position and a place. And I can tell you very uh, confidently in my own life, you know, when I was a younger priest, uh, I can't deny the thought that, you know, I thought one day I should become a bishop. As I always joke and say now, thank God that thought has gone away from my mind. And I jokingly say, being a director of the museum, there are enough of skull caps of different colors in the museum. I've got white, I've got purple, I've got red. I can wear any one. I say that very chokingly, but that's to lighten up the mood. But the fact is this, that you know, from time to time, uh, we all seek honors and we want titles. And um, I don't know really where these titles will take us. St. John Mariviani tells us very clearly, these are trifles and so did Mathathias. He was offered a title of being a friend of the um, of the king you know i i admire pope francis i know some people um, are rather unhappy with pope francis because they believe his teachings are too liberal i don't think his teachings are liberal he has stuck to the traditional teachings of the church but uh, a few years ago pope francis dropped uh, the title of monsignors i don't know whether you remember the good old days uh, we had monsignors and monsignors were allowed to dress in purple cassocks with a purple sash. Of course, they wouldn't wear a pectoral cross or a zucchetto or the skull cap. But, uh, you know, it was like somewhere to say, well, we couldn't make you bishop and we don't want you to be just a mere parish priest. So let's give you some midway title of opposition. And people were called uh, monsignors. Uh, they were like a little higher rank. I, I know very humble monsignors and I know some uh, that the minute they got the title got to their head, they wanted people to call them Monsignor. Okay? Now, these are silly trifles and Pope Francis very clearly said, uh, this is, you know, uh, he, I, I forget the exact terminology, but he says you all are chasing basically to become professional priests, you know, with, with, with titles. And I'm so glad he dropped it. 
So coming back to our text, um, in a day and time when so many seem to abandon the faith over some silly apparent issues that we have with the faith, um, I, I think there are more could be read as personal inconveniences uh, than really holding steadfast to some issues. The calling therefore to be a Christian is not limited to good times, but the calling also to be a Christian is in bad times, even when there is persecution, when you are pushed against the wall, when you have to stand up for um, a value that you hold fast. And I want to tell you this, that of late I have been standing up for some values that I really hold fast to. Uh, I, I don't expect to be rewarded for what I do, but uh, I keep telling myself how much am I going to compromise, sometimes even in the church. I find very often that, um, you know, we want to push everything under the carpet. We want to compromise everything. In India, this calling to stand up for the truth in the face of an unjust and biased action sometimes of our government almost seems for us, it should not even be an option. We should be standing up and speaking. Uh, how many father stands do we need? I don't know, but we certainly need a few more. I don't know if God is calling me to be one, but uh, I don't know whether I'm even worthy to stand up for some of these things. But at least to go to jail, sometimes I think to myself, why not? I know it's not a pleasant thought, finally, when you land up in a jail, maybe you think uh, outside, fine. But for a good cause, why not? Um, some years ago, I took up the case uh, when I was an assistant in um, Mount Carmel's parish in Bandra for the people of Parerawadi. I know they still hold me in great esteem. I was threatened at that point of time by some uh, local politicians who are pretty high up in government, one of whom who sent me a message at that point of time saying, um, you step out of the parish and we'll deal with you. Now, I must tell you, for three days I didn't step out of the parish. I was terrified. And then I said to myself, well, how long am I going to keep quiet? And these people really need a voice. And if we in the church constantly say, you know, you're struggling and suffering, I'll pray for you. Well, at least can you start praying at that moment in front of them? Yeah, I do that very often when people tell me, Father, we can't help you, but we'll pray for you. I said, really, you'll do that? They say, yes, Father, we'll do it. I say, okay, now hold my hand and start making a prayer. They can't even say two lines together. Yeah? So, we should not make these silly platitudes, especially to the poor. Now, really speaking, while we in the cities of India and perhaps sometimes in the cities across the world, do not experience such direct attacks, Christians in various parts of rural India face discrimination on a daily basis and of late we have been seeing moves by governments um, across India. Um, to start, um, you know, some kind of, of pressure. I, I don't need to say much. There was uh, a recent case in Karnataka and I'm so happy to find that the Bishop of Karnataka stood up and spoke up for the values and the freedoms that the church must enjoy in a democratic country. We are not asking for a favor. We are simply asserting our right, our right to practice our, our religion fairly, freely, and even propagate it because it is enshrined in the constitution. Yeah, it's not a favor we are asking for. So perhaps we who sit very often in ivory towers need to wake up like the like Mathathias and stand up for the persecution of our faith as enshrined in our constitution. Now, uh, I, I want to encourage you to start reading. I think one of the principal problems is that many of our Christians and I know many of you watch from abroad and uh, you might think that all of India is being persecuted, all the Christians in India. That's not entirely true. Uh, but uh, do we have um, as much freedom as we would like to in terms of propagation of our faith? And the answer is clearly no. Yeah, I think that is also that also must be said. There's a lot of um, vandalism sometimes of our institutions, our churches. There's always a kind of a threat. Um, there always seems to be several more rules and regulations being imposed on um, the minorities such as Christians and when it comes to uh, even um, voluntary uh, conversion. And I think people are free to accept whatever faith they want, especially in a country um, like India. Uh, inducements, of course, should never be uh, the reason why somebody embraces the faith, any faith. 
inducements is not a good thing. But if God um, puts the heart of someone to be his disciple, well, that's an individual personal choice uh, which really should not be tampered with. So let us pray this morning or this evening, whatever time of the day you are watching uh, this, uh, this, uh, this telecast. Let us pray for ourselves that we become witnesses to the message of Jesus Christ and to pray in a special way for those who are persecuted across the world. They bear a heavy burden. There are many missionaries who have died across the world. Uh, intolerance is tremendously great and pray that we don't become intolerant towards others. Yeah? Especially in parts of the world where Christians are in the majority, that we may live as good examples of what the Christian faith is. So let us pray. The Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord our God, as we read the book of Maccabees and study it, we see a tremendous calling to remain first faithful to our faith. And that's the first thing I want to pray, Lord, that we are faithful to your word, that we may not give up our faith for personal reasons, because suddenly our faith becomes inconvenient to the way of life that we wish to pursue, either in our careers, or in our relationships. So many people, Lord, abandon the faith. There are so many excuses. Church makes no sense. Faith is restrictive. I may not get a promotion if I do not participate in other religious functions. And we seek our own glory, Lord, not you. I pray, Lord, today that we may be faithful, faithful. If we are faithful, then we will be faithful. I want to pray, Lord Jesus, for governments across the world that persecute minorities, no matter what their faith. Lord, you and you alone convert. We human beings can only propagate your message of salvation. But you are in charge of every heart of every soul. It is you who set your seal upon those whom you have called. I pray today that many who have heard your message may respond joyfully to being your disciples, to following you. I want to pray for all of us who watch that through our actions, we may become evangelizers. Through our words, we may become evangelizers and even re-evangelizers to our own people who have lapsed in the faith. I lift up to you, Lord, all the brave men and women who stand up for the good news, but stand up without violence, who use words of love to win people over. I live remember in a special way today, Father Stan Swami, may we never forget his sacrifice for the Adivasi people, his hard work. We pray, Lord Jesus, that having purified him, you may find a place for him in heaven and that he may shine down on us. In your loving name, in your most precious name, in your most wonderful name, we make this prayer. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you, everybody. Uh, I must tell you that uh, I've recorded these uh, teachings today in advance because I will be in Goa from the 18th right up till the 27th of November. And uh, I'm going to spend some time here. Uh, I've got a lot of catching up to do in Goa, lots of work to do. And I also have to prepare for several programs when I come back. On the first Sunday of Advent, um, we will have a recollection at St. Stephen's Church from 5 o'clock to 8 o'clock. From 5 to 6, we will have some praise and worship and I will give an Advent recollection talk. At 6 o'clock, we'll celebrate the Eucharist. And then at 7, um, 7 o'clock, 
we will have adoration. I've got a lovely team that's coming in with, um, uh, with Giselle and Joel Arana and um, I think even Ralph will join us from uh, the By Grace uh, band formerly uh, from the Orlem Prayer Group. So I, I want to welcome all of them and I want to welcome you to come and join us. Uh, there is no charge for this program. Uh, we will start at five sharp. So do join me. Um, I will talk about it a little closer to the date. God bless you everybody and look forward to seeing all of you in Bombay who can come to the Advent Recollection at St. Stephen's Church in Kambala Hill on the first Sunday, that's the last Sunday of uh, this month uh, of November, 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. God bless you. Don't forget to like this video, share it with your friends and if you're watching us for the first time, subscribe to our channel. God bless you.